What if I told you that we could reverse aging? What if we could turn 80 year old people in the same state as 40 year old people? That's not science fiction, but research done by the best scientists in the world. Between them, one of the most prominent is Professor David Sinclair. In one experiment, he injected one twin mice with a drug and that mouse had a, the aspect of a much younger mouse compared to its twin. It even started running and exercising like one. It was as if a 60 year old man was running a marathon like a 20 year old man. That's completely nuts. Aging does not only deteriorate people, but it also increases the probability of horrible diseases. Diseases like diabetes, arthritis and cancer increase exponentially as people age. And so if you can tackle aging, you can reduce the probability of these people getting these horrible diseases and you can increase the health span of a person. Before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel as that helps me make more videos like this. So why do we age? As we age, telomeres get smaller. Telomeres are the end caps of our chromosomes. They are like the tips of our shoelaces. They prevent chromosomes from fraying. Every time a cell divides, a telomere gets smaller. So as we age, telomeres get shorter. Not only that, as we age, there's accumulation of senescent cells. They are zombie-like cells. They go on and live in the body and they inflame the cells around them. There's also poor intercellular communication. There's also mitochondrial dysfunction. There are in total nine dysfunctions on the cells that are related to aging. But are they the cause or the consequences of aging? The old theory that scientists had was that our DNA lost information as we aged. But evidence since then suggests that that's not the case. You basically can get the DNA of an old individual, clone it, and have a new individual live the same lifespan as the old individual. You can clone dogs, horses, and all different types of animals. So the whole information is still in the DNA. Professor Sinclair believes that the loss of information is in our epigenome. So what is the epigenome? If you think of the DNA as the software that writes our bodies, the epigenome is the CD carrying that software around. Every cell has the same DNA, but they have a different epigenome. Each cell has a different package of the DNA, how it coils up to not read some parts of the DNA. Also, some parts of the DNA are spooled out, so it's easier for the cell to transcribe it to proteins. The epigenome is responsible to turn on and off parts of the DNA inside each cell. And it, the way it does that is with proteins called histones that's wrapped on and things like methylation. Methylations are chemical signal markers that are placed in the DNA, that are placed in certain positions in the DNA. The epigenome is the way the body tells what cells will be. Without the epigenome, brain cells can become skin cells and vice versa. And that's where Professor Sinclair theory comes in. Professor Sinclair believes that getting older, it's losing that information in the epigenome. Over time, histones are not returned in places where they should be, and methylation is returned on places that they shouldn't be. So over time, cells forget what they are. So how that happens? When you go out in the sun, you break out your chromosomes. There is an effort that the cells go into to stick the chromosomes back together. The DNA is bundled up together. The cell has to unwrap it, recruit proteins to help, join it together and reset the structures. And that reset happens 99% of the time. That 1% is the aging process. So over time, histones are not added back to the places where they should be. And DNA methylation is added in places where it shouldn't be. That's why David Sinclair believes we age, due to this process. And to test this theory called the epigenomic theory of aging, Professor Sinclair's team has engineered a mouse to break down its chromosomes. 
and to break down is such a process that it doesn't damage the DNA but it accelerates the process that we just described. The mice that went through this process got much older than its twins. They got a hunchback, they got gray hair, they got dementia and all its organs got old. They measured the DNA methylation clock of these mice and they were much much older than its twins. This methylation process can tell exactly how old someone is and exactly when they're gonna die. This is called the Horvath clock. The more methylation you have, the older you get. So if this hypothesis is right, that is that the noise accumulating the epigenome is causing aging, then there are ways of reducing the noise in the epigenome and to reverse aging. We just need to better maintain our epigenomes. So let's talk about longevity genes. It seems that us bacteria and other living beings have two types of genes, each for a type of living. One, when times are good, these genes are used to grow and reproduce. But when conditions are tough, they use these conditions to protect and repair. The last ones are the ones that are called longevity genes or hormetic response genes. They create enzymes that, amongst other things, maintain their epigenome. They sense when we run a lot, when we're a bit cold or when we're hungry. These genes are turning on our general defenses against aging. What is that? Part of our cells fall apart. They can put them back together. Proteins misfold. They can get rid of them or put them back together. The ends of the chromosomes get shorter. They can lengthen. But one of the most important things that they can do is maintain our epigenome. There are three types of longevity genes. Sirtuins, they control the information of the cell. AMPK, these groups of genes sense how much energy the cells are taking in. And mTOR, they sense how many amino acids are coming into the body. So to turn on these genes, we can do intermittent fasting to keep it a little bit cold and to restrict the amount of amino acids we're taking in. So there are ways to help the cells protect the epigenome to not lose information over time. But what about completely resetting the epigenome back in time? Back in 2012, a Japanese researcher called Yamanaka discovered four factors that were applied to a gene therapy. With these four factors, you could reset a cell to be a pluripotent cell. It returned back a cell to what it was when it was an embryo. He ended up winning a Nobel Prize for that. And with that in mind, Professor Sinclair and his team had a breakthrough in his lab. They put a gene therapy that used three of these four factors into an eye of a mice in his lab. He reprogrammed the eye of the mice to become much younger. And the mouse that had cataract start to see again, that's crazy. They basically reverse aging of the eye. And the crazy part is that they can turn on and off this system in the mice and reverse aging to a certain age that they want. The problem though is that applying gene therapy to the whole body doesn't work now. But there is an animal in the wild called moon jellyfish that's able to reset its own epigenome in its whole body. And if we discover how they do that, we might be able to do the same to our own body. In the meantime, before we have these breakthroughs, we can still preserve the information in our epigenome and help reduce the loss of information there. And therefore reverse aging or reduce aging. And there are six simple things that people can do to help reduce aging. One is avoid DNA damage. Avoiding straight sun and x-rays and also wear sunscreen when going out. Eating less. Intermittent fasting has shown to increase lifespan of animals. Third, eating less protein. Protein is the most important food in our diet. So personally, I'm not eating less. Four, high intensity interval training. Five and six, be uncomfortable hot and uncomfortable cold. There are other ways of turning the hormetic responses in our body or mimicking those effects. 
there are these molecules that turn on the sirtuin pathway in the body. For example, if you give mice NMN, that in turn increases the levels of NAD+. NAD plus is a molecule found in the mitochondria that helps us make more energy. And we make less NAD plus as we get older. And Professor Sinclair and his team did just that. They gave NMN to older twin mice and they start behaving like younger mice. They actually look like young mice. They start outrunning the young mice. And throughout their body, it had the same effect as reverse aging. So how do we raise NAD plus in the body? There are a few ways of doing that. There is nicotinamide riboside or NR. There is vitamin B3, B complex and vitamin D supplements. There is NMN. Professor Sinclair actually mentioned in one of his interviews that it's important to keep NMN refrigerated after you open up the bottle. There is resveterol. And finally, fresh research shows that oleic acid also helps. Personally, I'm taking NMN and resveterol daily. There are a bunch of other techniques that have been shown to reverse aging or reduce aging. I'm not going into detail, but they are taking insulin, parabiosis or blood transfusion, removing senescent cells and other ways. We're still some time ways off of reverse aging from the whole body, but there are some promising techniques that are evolving over time and we have a pathway to get there. And some techniques can help parts of it. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. See you.